On Friday, May 28, 1886, the following article appeared in the Rockwall Success, Rockwall County's first newspaper. The greatest wonders that we have to record this week is the finding of a petrified human skull. While at work last Saturday, Ben Burton unearthed with his plow a gigantic skull fully as large as a half bushel. The staring sockets wherein the eyeballs once rolled were as large as a half gallon cup. Some of the few teeth remained, one of them about an inch thick by two inches long. This goes to prove that this county was once inhabited by a race of people that would be wonderful to look at now. Dr. Wiggins thinks it is the skull of some antediluvian giant that would have weighed at least a thousand pounds. Anyone wishing to see this mammoth skull can do so by calling the, at the success office as Mr. Burton says he will leave it there for inspection. So that is just an insane article. They found a giant skull and they were allowing people to come see it. You see that tiny red dot right there? That's the smallest county and it's also the wealthiest county out of all 254 Texas counties. It's also the only county in Texas to break six figures uh, annual average household income. And they found that giant skull in that newspaper back in 1886, but back in 1852, the site consisted of only a few families. This is in North Texas. And when three men were working together one day to dig a well, they discovered this massive 70 stories deep when it was eventually totally uncovered, buried rock wall. And the, the bricks were at the bottom that were big and it got small bricks at the top. It's got a window in it. It's crazy. Their names were Benjamin Boydston, Terry Wade, and Clay Stevenson. And what they found there is these huge rectangular stones. They weighed like two tons each. Clearly not man-made, or clearly not natural, completely man-made, or made by someone, but not a natural formation. Uh, they had mortar in between the stones. Larger stones as you go down is like the, the crazy giveaway of this thing. They found a tunnel at one point, a window ledge. Like there's a, there's a window in there, there's a, a circular stone area. Um, there's like a drawing and then a colorized version of it. They named the town Rockwall and then two years later they named the whole county Rockwall. That's crazy. And uh, so, <laughs> you can see some of these, these massive stones still today. And they're out there at the little tiny historical museum in Rockwall. And uh, there's been several occasions when like a farmer would be digging a well and he would discover this massive stone, dig around it, and only to find it was part of this huge wall. And this dude right here made an attraction to charge 25 cents, and you can come see it for yourself. And in the 40s, that guy eventually, he shut it down because allegedly, he, and he filled it in and, and closed it all off to the public. That's where he used to let people walk around down there because he said it was going to cave in, and he was afraid. I don't know, maybe they covered it up for that. Who knows why they really covered it up. Um, these are the old photos from the beginning, like the first stuff that they found there. These uh, these photos coming up are amazing. They're totally different. It's just crazy. There's in different spots that it's been uncovered, and um, it's just absolutely wild. So crazy. That's where they found the petroglyphs in one of them, and that's some dirt he put in there so you could see the petroglyphs better. And this article right here is wild. Wonders that will never cease immediately after it was generally known that Mr. J.B. Burton had found a gigantic petrified skull. A large crowd collected and set about making an examination of the surrounding ground. Spades, picks, and axes were plentiful and in use. Mr. W.R. Greer might have been seen pounding the ground with a huge hammer and intently listening after each successive blow. When he was heard to call out, This way, boys! There was a general rush to his position. Listen, boys! said Greer as he brought the hammer down with a heavy thump on the large flat rock. To the astonishment of all, the hammer slipped from Greer's hands and after a short interval was heard to strike something below that had the clear distinct ring of metal. Now the wildest excitement prevailed. A lantern and rope were quickly brought and the earth was rapidly cleared away. The hole in the rock, which proved to be slate, was enlarged and the lantern was let down into the murky darkness. At last Mrs. Burton, Greer, and J.B. Steger volunteered to descend and explore the mystery. The cavity proved to be a chamber of about 60 by 100 foot square and 40 feet from the floor to the slate roof through which they had effected an entrance. This roof was supported on pillars of black marble, which polished sides glittered in the lamplight and made one think of the Orient. This underground palace will undoubtedly astonish the world when thoroughly explored. 
In one corner stands a large iron chest supposed to be full of gold or valuables which was so heavy as to baffle all efforts to remove it. Among other things found was a huge iron bedstead 25 feet long and a pair of sandals 3 feet wide by 10 inches wide. A battle axe with a pole handle 12 feet long which weighed at least 75 pounds. The explorers extended their investigation no further but are sure that there are other rooms connected with the one visited. The noted rock wall from which our county takes its name runs in a few yards of this palace. This we think settles the mystery. All surrounding circumstances go to show that this Goliath built this rock wall to enclose his vast estate. Absolutely insane. They have some of those on display outside at the historical place. Historical. That's the uh, courthouse, and they reassembled some of the rocks they actually took from that place. The mortar in between there is new, but they tried to do that to resemble the, the window area they found. And there's underground chambers underneath the courthouse, but this is the wildest, and this is the last one. <clears throat> we told you in our last that another search had been made. Your correspondent visited this wonderful subterranean palace to ascertain for himself the almost incredible facts connected with it. We arrived in time and we were invited to descend with the exploring party consisted of J.B. Steger, J.B. Greer, Jess Handley, Tom Bractor, J.B. Burton, and Dr. Wiggins, and your correspondent. That's what's crazy. There's three J.B.'s. What are the odds? We at once began examining the walls and found on the north side a huge iron door which yielded to our efforts assisted by a crowbar and a sledgehammer. As it swung round on its rusty hinges, its harsh grating sound was echoed and re-echoed from the cavern of darkness that lay before us. No one was in a hurry to go in as the heavy noise was heard like the slamming of a door, and each feared to intrude. Finally, Steger thrust his lantern forward and peered in, and at least we walked forward, followed by the party. Mr. Editor, I have read of unearthing buried cities and of the mysterious things found in them, but never did I dream of seeing what we did that day. Tom Bractor's eyes could have been snared off with a grapevine. Dr. Wiggins, Greer, Stiger, and Hanley gazed in awe at what, we met, what met their sight. A huge iron kettle swung near the floor. It would hold at least a thousand gallons, and against it leaned a fork as large as a hay fork. You can better imagine our consternation when I tell you that we, what we saw in that kettle, a mass of bones and grinning, staring skulls. Dr. Wiggins touched one with his cane, and it fell into dust. There is no doubt that the ancient Goliath, whose residence was this, was a fierce cannibal. But may I be delivered from what we next encountered. In the center of the hall, we found an iron trap door with a, which our combined strength at last raised. When from out of Stygian darkness, there flapped screaming huge bird with eyes like Poe's nevermore raven. In a dismal half-human voice, in grating screeches, the bird seemed to cry, Get out of here! Get out of here! It is needless to say that in a mad terror we hastily obeyed, as the bird, blinded by the light, flew from wall to wall, a large bat perhaps. We quickly reached the platform, whence we were hastily drawn to the open air. Steger, Greer, and Bractor fainted, and Dr. Wiggins was so unnerved that he could do nothing for them. They were resurrected, resuscitated by throwing cold water into their faces. Bractor said he would not have fainted if it had not been for that when they opened the trap door, he smelled something like yarn, socks, and it's, the last words are unreadable. So that is crazy. And there's three JBs. That's that's just why. What are the odds? There's three people named JBs. And like two two weeks later or a week later or something, the Rockwall Success newspaper was bought by another company, never heard of again. And they shut it all down and, and the microfish from these newspapers is also missing. But there is copies of the newspaper around that you can see. It is just it's totally bizarre. <clears throat> and you know, of course, when you talk about skulls and giants and they're finding all these artifacts everywhere, the good old Smithsonian fellows are going to show up and collect any and everything for safekeeping, of course. And I don't know for a fact that's who those are, but many people think that's who that is. They're, it's just really weird that they said, come see the skull at the Rockwall Success newspaper office. And then immediately they, they, took, they did take the skull and it hasn't been seen since. This guy looks like Alistair Crowley a little bit to me, and he's got like a snake artifact he found. It's made of stone. He found it in like one of the wells or something he was digging out there. And there's tons of newspaper articles. All these local universities have been out. Eventually, eventually you got the, the History Channel. I think it was in 2013 maybe they came out. They did a huge dig and had all these pros and the experts to do their research on it and of course they said it's all completely natural but as you see some of these newer pictures you tell me if it's natural i don't believe it is at all there's just too many the, the stones have 
piezoelectric uh, qualities. They measure upwards of what is 40 gauss, and people have people have left and right said that the, this is not man-made, but mainstream science won't touch it. They don't want nothing to do with it. Uh, it's 20 miles long. It goes all over Rockwall County in a big rectangular shape. It's 70 feet deep. It's a, the top of the walls leveled at 550 feet above sea level. Apparently, it's got solstice and equinox alignments. Um, there's geopolymer mortar in between the stones. It's made up of three different quartz varieties. Um, it sits on the 33rd degree parallel. There's that. There's these metal rings they found in little hemispheres of metal and it's inside the rocks, smelted from iron, nickel, copper, and tin. And they look like there's nothing natural about it. There's a window in there. There's like a little watchtower area. Just take a look at some of these, these images.